Have you ever wondered exactly how the MMR and Hunt Showdown works? It's not very clear in the game what's happening. So I have wondered, and it turns out it's actually pretty simple. When you kill a player, or a player kills you, there is an exchange in MMR rating points between you and this other player. How many rating points you gain or lose depends on how high your rating is in comparison to the other player. This is called an ELO rating system, and it's a very common way for game developers to create skill-based matchmaking. I think it's most notably used in chess. And since Hunt MMR is exactly the same as the chess rating system, it's pretty easy to break down what happens when you kill a player, or when you're killed by a player. So that's what I want to talk about. So, how do we confirm or prove that the ELO system is being used? Well, uh, I created a little ELO rating calculator uh, that takes an input of two MMR values, player one and player two, and will output their new rating depending on who wins the fight. Uh, so let's just take a quick look. Uh, we have the rating of two different players, their estimated chance to win, and then it asks who won the fight. Let's say player one won the fight, and it will output the new rating of each player along with the change in MMR value that each of them will receive. Uh, exactly how this works is just a formula that you can Google. If you just Google ELO rating formula, uh, there's a whole gigantic Wikipedia article talking about how this works. So for the purposes of this video, just take my word for that I have translated the formula into here and it works as it should. Now, if you want to play around with this yourself, you do not need to make a script. This is completely unnecessary. I just did it for fun. What you can do is just Google ELO rating system calculator and just pick any of the results here. So let's start with an extreme example. Someone who's 3000, which I think is a six star rating, versus someone who's 2500. Uh, so this is a huge disparity. Uh, when we run this and we say the six star won the game, if you look, there's a 95% chance the six star wins the encounter, which honestly is probably pretty accurate. So let's go ahead here and pick the winner. There would be a rating change of two, and that seems about right, right? You know, six star crushing a noob shouldn't affect their MMR very much. But what about the opposite? We're going to say this three star hit that 5% chance, he got a lucky headshot. He won the encounter, and there's a change of 30 points. Yeah, so big, big change in this case. This is about as much of a change as you can conceivably get. All right, so now let's say someone who is just barely a six star, they're 3,012, just 12 points over being a six star. And then they encounter someone who is uh, almost a five star. Let's say they are... Uh, 2740, so that's 10 points shy of being a 5 star, I believe. Let me double check that. Okay, yeah, so here we have the MMR legend, which can be found in the game menus. And we can see here that 2750 is where you become a 5 star, and 3000 is where you become 6. So in the case of our 6 star and our 4 star player here, uh, we're going to run the calculation on them. Uh, so the 6 star is a significantly higher chance to win the encounter, but as we know, it's on showdown. Get a lucky dually headshot, right? Player 2 wins with the lower MMR. We get a 26 point exchange. So the effect that this would have is that this would pull the 6 star player down into the 5 star bracket and it would bump the four star player up into the five star bracket. And it works this way for every single time that you kill or are killed by another player. So this is nice and simple when you just have, you know, two players killing each other, but over the course of an entire game, let's say you get six kills and die five times, uh, there's a lot more ELO calculations that happen there. So how do we actually 
find these MMR values to test this because they're not present in the game anywhere. All you see in Hunt are the stars. So I think most people, or a lot of people, know about this attributes file where they, you can actually look at your MMR. So once you open this file, uh, click Control and F on your keyboard to open the Find tool. Type in your name and make sure Down is selected and just click Find Next. Once you've done that, just scroll down a bit farther and look for Mission Bag Player MMR value. This is what you're looking for. Uh, sometimes you might find that your name is in here multiple times with a completely different value. The way to deal with the extra data and the multiple occurrences of your name is to actually just delete the data out of the file. Uh, don't delete the attributes file in its entirety though because it contains other information about your game settings. But what you can do is just open it up and scroll down to Mission Bag Player, highlight all of the data including Mission Bag Team and delete it. Then save the file once you've done that, there is no more mission bag player data, and the next time that you complete a game or leave a game, the attributes file will be populated with data again. So I just joined a quick play match. Now, I could just leave, and I would still get data in the attributes file, but I'll try to actually encounter a player. <laughs> Well, I didn't plan to be the wellspring, but here we are. Wow. Okay, so now that we've completed a game, uh, the attributes file will have data in it again, uh, specifically the mission bag player. So we find it by searching for my name, scroll down, there it is. And it's only going to be in here once now. So that sort of confirms that we've gotten rid of the bad data. So this is my MMR, but not really. Uh, I think this is what most people don't know about this attributes file, is that this is actually one game behind. And what I mean by that is this MMR value is what it was at the start of the game that I just played, not at the conclusion. So this is not factoring the three kills that I got. So it should be a little bit higher than this. So to get the real value of my MMR, I need to enter a game so that this will be updated again. So to summarize, I'm going to go into a match, I'm going to kill no one, and I'm going to be killed by no one, so that I do not affect my MMR anymore. And we will still see this change. Let's find out. Okay, I just died in a quick play. Without interacting with any players, I'm going to see what the attributes file looks like now. Uh, again, search for Sailor. Scroll down, I'm now 28.56, so my MMR increased without interacting with players, and this is, this is my true MMR now. So now let's just quickly test this to prove that this is accurate. I'm going to go into a game, I'm going to either kill one player or get killed by one player to see if this formula works as I expect it does. I think he's right here. Bomber, dude. So that guy was pretty blue. Uh, four star. Okay, attributes. Um, so, by myself, our MMR should be the same as it was before. Yep. All right, now we're gonna look for pretty blue. There he is. Scroll down. He was twenty six forty. So we want to plug that into our MMR calculator here. We got. 2856, 
2856. Pretty blue was 2640. So now when I run this, I won the encounter. So I'm going to click 1. Uh, so there should be a change of 7 MMR. So if I play another game now, <laughs> I should see in the attributes file 2863 instead of 2856. I should see a change of 7. Alright, so I just need to die immediately. This will do. Alright, no kills. So, what was our prediction? Our prediction was 2863. Let's take a look twenty eight sixty three there it is so I think that this proves that the ELO rating system is being used and this attributes file which has your MMR in it is always one game behind and you can use the other data in this file to determine your true MMR if you want or you could just be content with it being one game behind and not waste a bunch of damn time. Uh, thanks for watching.